Frédéric Desbiens, and this is another episode of ADF Architecture TV. Today, I will talk about resource bundles. In previous episodes, I repeated a lot that internationalization is about much more than text strings, and this is true. However, text is an integral part of any web or mobile application, and this is why we must use it in a controlled and structured way. This is where resource bundles are very, very useful. Resource bundles are a part of the Java Enterprise Edition platform, but JDeveloper and ADF extend that support and provide very, very, very productive tools in order for you to manage the translated text strings that you will package in bundles that will be adapted to specific locales. So now, let's have a look at the concept of resource bundles and how you can use them in ADF and JDeveloper. What are resource bundles exactly? Well, a resource bundle basically is simply a bunch of text strings where each string is identified by its own unique ID. In other words, a resource bundle is a repository of key value pairs of translatable content. Resource bundles are an integral part of the Java Enterprise Edition platform and their aim is to separate the user interface from the text it contains. It's like the separation between HTML and CSS. HTML provides the content and CSS provides the style. In this case, JSF provides the structure for the page and resource bundles will provide the text for the labels and messages that will be displayed in those pages. It is really important to remember that ADF as a framework is built on the top of Java Enterprise Edition and as you know, ADF components uh, and even ADF uh, BC components when you use ADF BC as the ORM for your application, they are delivered with several hundreds of messages and those messages, if you feel that their translation in your own locale is not correct, you can override any of them through the mechanism of resource bundles. We now know what a resource bundle is, but how does an application select a resource bundle for a specific user? In the case of web applications, this is straightforward. Every browser has got linguistic preferences where you can specify your preferred language as well as alternate languages you want to be displayed. So, a typical Java web application will try to match those preferences. But there is a transparent fallback mechanism if the application cannot supply the desired locales. So, here is an example to illustrate a bit. Suppose my preferred locale is Canadian French. The code for that locale is fr for French and underscore ca for Canada. Okay, now if I use an application where the default locale is US English, what will happen? Basically, the application will first try to find a bundle matching fr underscore ca, Canadian French. If it doesn't find one, it will try to find any bundle starting with FR. And it could be uh, France French or Belgian French. Any French uh, will do in that specific case. If it doesn't find any, then it will switch to US English. If, for whatever reason, the US English locale that is defined as the default in the application descriptors is not there, then what will happen is that the application will try to locate any English bundle. And finally, as a last resort, if there are Java classes in the application that are used as resource bundles, the application will try to use those. So as you can see, there is a fallback mechanism into place and if my browser had several preferred languages uh, defined, then the application will have tried 
before switching to English to load each and every of those languages uh, according to the order in which they are declared in your browser preferences. So the philosophy behind this is that it's always better to display something rather than nothing. Basically, if a user's preferred locale is not available, the application will display a screen with meaningful labels and uh, text uh, in the hope that the end user will be able to understand what is displayed. JDeveloper and ADF, by extension, support three distinct resource bundle types. The first one is Java classes. In that case, you create Java classes that will contain the various text strings. This was uh, heavily used in the early days of Java, and nowadays, uh, let's say that, well, that method is still available, but is not necessarily widely used. Um, the, the, the problem with uh, Java classes as resource bundles is that when you make a change, you need to recompile a class. So obviously there is an additional step that doesn't have necessarily value for the end user. Um, Java class resource bundles, however, are very useful if you want, for example, to fetch the text strings from a database or from another kind of uh, infrastructure and then you can write code in the class in order to fetch the various text strings. The second uh, resource bundle type supported by ADF and JDEV are properties files. So properties files are very very common in the Java world. They are very simple and very easy to use because basically they are just okay key value, key value and there, there is uh, nothing more to, to do and they are more compact than XML, so they will give you a slight performance advantage because of that. Uh, and the third uh, resource bundle type available is XLIF. So XLIF is an OASIS uh, standard and is used by very, very specialized tools that uh, translation uh, shops, uh, for example, will use. So if you are part of a big organization, which has got a translation department or if you are doing business with translators maybe they've got tools that uh, support the XLIF format um, in that case XLIF is uh, an obvious choice for you to use um, however it is very important to remember that those three bundle types are available in ADF, but if you are doing ADF mobile application, then your only option is XLIF. So, in the case of ADF mobile, basically, you don't have a choice and you need to use the XLIF format. Whichever format you use, JDeveloper supports you and gives you uh, specific editors that will enable you to work properly with the various resource bundles you have in the application. Whatever bundle type you choose to use, the naming conventions for the bundle files are always the same. The only thing that will be different between the three bundle types is the file extension. So, for the application's default bundle, the only thing you have to do is to specify a name for the bundle. So in this case, for example, I use my bundle. So I will use mybundle.java for a Java class, mybundle.properties for a property file, or mybundle.xlf for the xlif format. So this is quite simple. The tricky part comes when you want to support other locales than the default one for the application. In that case, you need really to specify in the file name what locale this specific bundle is supposed to support. And as we've seen in previous episodes, uh, a locale can be very, very detailed. It can be a language, a country, a variant, a region, etc. etc. So, depending on what is the target locale you will maybe need to specify all of the five possible components in the file name. So in this case, I've used a simpler example. So if I want to support 
Canadian French for a specific locale, then the language code is FR and the country code is CA. So the Canadian French version of my default bundle will be my bundle underscore FR underscore CA. And then with the appropriate uh, file extension for uh, depending on the resource bundle type I'm using. Once you have created the files for your various resource bundles, it is essential to ensure that you configure those bundles properly in order for them to be recognized by the application. So, typically in an ADF application, you need to do two things in the faces config.xml descriptor. The first one is to declare the locales that are supported by the application, and there you list all the codes for the locales, the specific locales that are supported. So you can declare a default locale for the application and this will uh, be used in the fallback mechanism and you declare any number of supported locales. And the thing is, if you declare a locale as being supported in the descriptor and you don't have any resource bundle for that specific locale, everything will still work. The fallback mechanism will ensure that another locale is selected according to the user's browser preferences and according to what you put in the descriptor. In some cases, if you create bundles that are not part of the project properties in JDeveloper, you will need to declare them in faces config as well. And here you just provide specific name and a variable that will be used in expression language in order to reference the entries in the bundle. As a software architect, one of the questions uh, you will have to answer when using resource bundles is how many of those bundles you will want to use. And there is a setting in the JDEV uh, properties for the project that enable you to have a single bundle for the whole project or to have one bundle per file. And a rule of thumb here, my typical recommendation, but you will need to take your specific context into account before following that, but typically what I say is you should have one bundle for the whole view controller project because okay you have a set of pages and you want to reuse as much as possible the various error messages and uh, the various labels in the application and on the other hand for a model project so you use uh, ADFBC and ADFBC can uh, display error messages on their own they have their own validations and uh, there you can reference uh, resource bundles as well. So in the case of model projects uh, using ADFBC, my recommendation is usually to have one bundle per file. And this means that every entity, view object, app module will have its own resource bundle. Uh, the whole point here is that you may want to repackage at some point a part of those uh, ADFBC artifacts as ADF libraries and in that case it's much easier for reuse for each ADFBC artifact to have its own resource bundle. But even if you do that, you can store uh, common resource bundle entries in a centralized bundle and just have you know messages that are specific to uh, an entity or view object in the entity or view objects uh, resource bundle. And the way to do that is very straightforward, but let me display it in JDeveloper instead of just describing it uh, in theory here. In order to illustrate some of the concepts uh, we've seen up to now, here is a small demo. So this is a typical ADF uh, application inside JDeveloper 12C, but the settings will be at exactly the same place in 11G if that's what you're using. So, the first thing to remember is that we've got a setting in the project properties that specifies how many bundles we've got for the application. So, 
that's in the project properties, in the resource bundle section, I can select one bundle per project, this is the case for this project, or one bundle per file. The difference between the two is that one bundle per project results in a single, in this case, property file for the whole application, and we see it here in the application navigator. If I was changing the setting to one bundle per file from now on, what would happen is that JDeveloper would create a new property file for each new page or fragment I would create from now on, okay? Now, maybe you have a single bundle for a project, but you want to reference another bundle or to segregate some entries in another bundle or to integrate a property file extracted from another application, whatever the reason. Well, you can do that fairly, fairly easily in JDeveloper. So let's create such a bundle in this case. So I will create a new property file. This is straightforward. So let's call it my author bundle slash uh, dot properties. Mm. All right. In this bundle, I will create a single entry. Let's use the ADF motto of productivity. Oh, yes, productivity. Sorry, with choice. OK, so now I've got an entry in my resource bundle. The next step is to reference that bundle in the project properties for it to be seen by JDeveloper. So in order to do that, I go back to the resource properties and go to bundle search. And in bundle search, I can add a bundle from either the model or view controller project. So my new bundle is in view controller. It's somewhere with the source code. So I just select my author bundle. And from now on, I will be able to reference the bundles and trees in my application. So let's go here. I've got this JSF page. I will now just add an output text to it. All right. And the value for this output text will simply be selected from the new bundle. So here at the top of the screen in the select text resource dialog, I can select the bundle I am using. So now I will select my author bundle and I will start to type the key, so ADF, and automatically, you know, there's a kind of autocomplete behind the scenes. It's already located all entries who've got ADF somewhere in the key. So I've got my motto here that comes from the new bundle I created. So I select that, and at runtime, the proper message will be displayed in the page for from that specific bundle. You see here, view controller bundle, ADF motto. As we have seen today, JDeveloper and ADF give you lots of flexibility in order to manage your resource bundles and the text strings they contain. You can use Java classes, property files, or XML files. You can even fetch everything from the database if you feel you need to, although this approach will require you to write some code. Moreover, you can give users the opportunity to dynamically select at runtime their preferred locale, and even switch from one locale to another. This is really a powerful tool in order to accommodate the needs of multilingual users. Time's up for today. And speaking of time, next, in next episode, I will talk about time zone management. I hope you will watch it. I'm Frédéric Debien. Thank you for watching this episode of ADF Architecture TV.